Hello everyone, thanks for stopping in. Today we're going to be talking about section 5.2 for Math 100, and since this video will be released the week of Halloween, I thought I would dress up and I am a low-budget minion from the movie Despicable Me. Let's get started. We've seen positive exponents in the previous section, but what about negative exponents? Or sorry, zero exponents. How do we deal with zero exponents? Negative exponents are down here. Let's see. For any non-zero number a, a to the zero is equal to one. As long as a is not zero, raising it to the zero power is equal to one. Zero to the zero is undefined. That does not have a good definition. We don't use zero to the zero. Think of like how we don't divide by zero. So let's see. Our example is 17 to the zero is equal to one. And then let's look at a bunch of examples of that at the same time. 38 to the zero, that will just be one. Here, negative nine to the zero with parentheses will be one, but be careful. Negative nine to the zero without parentheses will be negative one because nine to the zero is one and you negate it. Remember, this negative is not included in the exponent because it's not in the parentheses. Let's see, x to the zero. Well, x to the zero would be one, right? Because x will be a number, right? And it'll be raised to the zero power to give me one. Be careful though, five x to the zero is going to be five times x to the zero, right? The zero is only on the x. And this will be five times one, which is actually gonna just reduce to five, right? So five x to the zero is five, but parentheses five x to the zero, well, that's just one again, right? Whatever five x is, I'm raising it to the zero power, which will make it one. So that's the zero exponent. It gives us one when applied to its value. Notice we have to be a little bit careful with negative signs and a little bit careful when we have variable expressions. But besides that, it's always one, right? Now, negative exponents. For any non-zero real number and any integer n, a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. Negative exponents move the number to the denominator. So for example, three to the negative two is equal to one over three squared, which is one over nine, right? Three squared is nine. Be careful with negative exponents. A lot of people want three to the negative two to be equal to negative nine. That is not how it works. Three to the negative two is equal to one ninth. Negative exponents give us division problems. So let's take a look. 9 to the negative 3 would be equal to 1 over 9 to the 3. 1 quarter to the negative 3, we need to be careful. It's going to be 1 over, and then in the bottom I'll have 1 quarter to the 3rd. Now let's work with this a little bit. Let's see, we'll have one in the top, that's not changing in the bottom. This three will get applied to both the one and the four, right? That's one of the rules for my previous section 5.1. That's one of the power rules. I don't remember whether it's A, B, or C, but it's one of the power rules, right? Three, one to the third is just one over four to the third. And now, I don't like this four to the third in the bottom, so I'm going to multiply by 4 to the 3rd here. But remember, if you do it to the bottom of the fraction, you got to do it to the top, right? It'll cancel my 4 to the 3rds here. It'll give me, let's see, 4 to the 3rd in the top over 1, which is just 4 to the 3rd, right? Anything divided by 1 is 4 to the 3rd. So we reduced to the complex fraction, right? We multiplied by the denominator to cancel it out, right? So we get 4 to the 3rd. Notice, it just flipped the, the 4, right, to the top. 2 thirds to the negative 5. Well, 2 thirds to the negative 5 would be 1 over 2 thirds to the 5th, which maybe this time I don't want to work with the um, complex fraction part. I would rather write it as 1 
divided by 2 over 3 to the fifth. Now, before division comes exponents, so this would be 1 divided by 2 to the fifth over 3 to the fifth. Right? The 5 will distribute to the 2 and the 3. I've now done the exponent part. I'm going to leave these in exponential form because now I'm going to k f c 3 to the 5th over 2 to the 5th, which anything times 1 stays the same, right? I keep flipped and changed to perform the division. So notice this started off as 2 thirds to the negative 5 and ended as 3 over 2 both to the 5. Now we're actually going to see that there's actually a much shorter way to do problems of this nature when we have fractions and negative exponents. So if it seems a little messy right now, don't worry, there's going to be a shortcut later on. Now, 6 to the negative 1 over 3 to the negative 1, be careful, there's subtraction. Subtraction does not play nicely with exponents. This will be 1 over 6 minus 1 over 3. 1 over 6, 6 to the negative 1, minus 1 over 3, which came from the 3 to the negative 1. Now, let's see. If I wanted to simplify this any farther, I would have to get like denominators, right? Let's see. 1 over 6 minus 1 third can become 2 over 6, right? Multiply by 2 and multiply by 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 over 6. So for this one, after I apply the exponent rule, I have to perform a regular calculation, right? Now notice these came in several different flavors. Subtraction is always going to be messy. Subtraction never works nicely with exponents. But these fraction ones, we're actually going to see a trick in a moment that will make it a little bit easier. Now, we have a caution first. Caution. A negative exponent does not indicate a negative number. Negative exponents lead to reciprocals. Notice things are getting flipped around, right? 1 over 4 became 4 over 1. 2 over 3 became 3 over 2. That is what is called reciprocals. Notice there wasn't any negative numbers in these first three examples. Nothing was negative after I applied the exponent rule. Don't let that trip you up. Negative exponents lead to reciprocals. Now, for any non-zero numbers a and b and any integers m and n, a to the negative m over b to the negative n will be equal to b will be in the top and its exponent will become positive. In the bottom, I will have a and its exponent will become positive. It'll be m. I like to think of the negative exponent as the key that allows you to move from numerator to denominator. By doing so, you use your key and it becomes positive. a to the negative m moved down bottom and became a to the m. b to the negative n moved up top and became b to the n. In our example, 3 to the negative 5 over 2 to the negative 4 becomes 2 to the 4 over 3 to the 5. Notice the 2 moved up, the 3 moved down, the negative 4 became positive, and the negative 5 became positive. That is one example. The other example, a over b to the negative n is equal to b over a to the positive n. Notice if it's a fraction inside parentheses and a negative exponent outside, I can flip the fraction inside and make the exponent positive. Negative exponents involve flipping numerators and denominators. In our example, we have 4 fifths to the negative 3 becomes 5 fourths to the 3. And notice these examples here would help us shortcut these. Notice 1 fourth flipped is 4 over 1 to the 3rd, right? Two-thirds flipped is three halves, and that's two to the fifth, right? Because the exponents become positive. So we can use these rules to shortcut it. Be careful, though. 
when you have sums or differences. You cannot use this rule to change negative exponents to positive exponents if there's sums or differences of terms. For example, 5 to the negative 2 plus, see the plus? Immediately I know I cannot use any of my shortcut rules. Addition does not play nicely with my shortcuts. 3 to the negative 1. So that becomes 1 over 5 squared plus 1 over 3. 7 is left alone minus 2 to the negative 3 becomes 1 over 2 cubed. This is a complex fraction, right? It's got fractions inside of fractions. When you have plus and minus, you cannot use these shortcut rules. You have to apply them individually to each step. This is much more difficult to sort out than being able to just use the shortcut rule, right? You have to apply each step individually. You can't use the shortcuts. You can't use these shortcut rules we've learned when you have plus or minus. They don't work nice with exponents. Now, we are going to have another rule called the quotient rule. We already had a product rule. The quotient rule is going to be similar. If I have a to the m divided by a to the n... So remember, maybe over here, remember, the product rule was a to the m times a to the n. And remember, you added the exponents. That's the product rule, right? The quotient rule, what's the opposite of times? It's divide. What's the opposite of plus? It's minus. We keep the base the same, and we subtract the exponents. Keep the same base and subtract the exponents. In an example, 5, over eight, or 5 to the 8 over 5 to the 6 would be equal to 5 to the 8 minus 6, right? 8 minus 6, which is 2, which is 5 squared is 25, right? Caution, though. Don't reduce the 5s to be 1. The base stays the same. This is not correct, right? By the quotient rule, the quotient must have the same base, so, 5 to the 8 over 5 to the 6 must equal 5 to the 2, 8 minus 6. We can confirm this by writing it out. 5 to the 8 in the top would be, there's 5, 6, 7, 8 fives. And in the bottom, we'd have 6 fives, right? Notice, I can cancel pairwise the first six fives from the top with all six fives oops sorry with all six fives in the bottom five times five in the top gives me five squared over there's nothing left in the bottom remember when there's nothing left in a fraction after you've canceled factors you're left with the number one right so 5 squared over 1, anything over 1 is itself, so I get 5 squared when I reduce that out, right? Now once again, you're not going to want to write out these 5s every time. It takes a while to write 8 5s over 6 5s, especially if the exponents get bigger. So we want to learn these rules, these quotient rules, these power rules, and these product rules. Now let's take a look at some examples. Let's take a gander here. We've got 3 to the 4th over 3 to the 6. Well, this will be equal to 3 to the 4 minus 6, which will be equal to 3. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, right? Now, that's a negative exponent, so I'll put it in the denominator. It'll be 1 over 3 squared. Now, I could make that 1 over 9, but I'm going to leave it in exponential form so we can see the exponent rules at work. Now, in my next example, y to the negative 4 over y to the negative 9. Well, they're both negative exponents, right? Remember, negative exponents allow you to flip which side of the fraction you are on. So y to the 9 will go on top, because the y to the negative 9 was originally in the bottom. And the y to the 4 will go to the bottom. Now, I have a quotient with the same base. This will be y to the 9 minus 4, which is y to the 5, right? 9 minus 4 is 5. Alternatively, 
negative 4 over... I could have just used the quotient right away. I could have done y to the negative 4 minus negative 9, right? Negative 4 minus negative 9. They have the same base. Notice double negative, this would become a plus, right? Negative 4 plus 9 would become y to the 5 also. Notice I got the same answer either way. Sometimes you can use rules in either fashion. Now, let's look at this next example. Notice 2 to the 4 times z plus a to the 7. Oh, there's a plus sign. I need to be careful. Whenever there's a plus sign, I should be cautious. Now look. 2 to the negative 5, z plus a to the 6. I have z plus a appearing in both the top and the bottom. And in both parts, it's in parentheses. This is actually a base, right? It's something to the 6. I can leave the z plus a together. So let's look at the 2 first. 2, let's see. Quotient rule will tell me I take the 2 to the 4 and subtract the negative 5. You also could have you know, moved the negative 5 to the top if you wanted to. Either way, but I'm just going to use the quotient rule. Now, for the z plus a portion, I have 7 and 6, so it'll be 7 minus 6. Now, I've got to clean this up. This becomes 4 plus 5, right? That becomes 2 to the 9. 7 minus 6 is 1, so this would be z plus a to the 1, you don't need to write the one exponent, though, but I do need to keep it together, right? This group was its own base. If you wanted to write the one, you could, and then remove it later, right? But we don't need to write the one exponent. Now, in our next example, it's a little small, so I'm going to rewrite it first. 5x to the negative 3, y to the 8, over 3 to the negative 2, x to the 4, y to the 6. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, when I look at this, I notice that two of my bases have negative exponents. This one does, and this one does. And I also notice there's no addition or subtraction here. Everything is multiplication or division, right? It's multiplication in the top divided by multiplications in the bottom. So I know I can use my rules. I know I can use my shortcut rules. Now, the reason I identified what have negative exponents is because the things with negative exponents are going to flip-flop where they are. 3 to the negative 2 will move to the top and become 3 squared x to the negative 3 will move to the bottom and become x to the 3. Everything else will stay where it is. And remember, we're multiplying times 5 times y to the 8. And then in the bottom, I had x to the 4 and y to the 6. Now, in the top, 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45. Now well, let's see, y to the 8 and y to the 6. If I'm working with the y's now, that'll be y to the 2, right? Because 8 minus 6 is 2. Notice the top had more y's, so they stay in the top, right? Because there was more y's in the top. y to the 8 over y to the 6 becomes y to the 2. So I dealt with the numbers, I dealt with the y's. My x's were in the bottom, so they'll stay in the bottom. Let's see, x and x, I add their exponents. That'll be x to the 7. So I have 45y squared over x to the 7. Notice I have to combine my like terms. Not combine my like terms, sorry. I have to combine my like factors. The factors that are alike, right? X's with X's, Y's with Y's. These numbers, I had to, you know, 3 squared was 9. But I can work with the values at hand, right? Now, let's write our rules down. Let's write all of our rules here. We're going to have a few of them. The first is the product rule. And that says that A to the M times A to the N is equal to the A to the M plus N. When you have the same base, 
you add the powers. The zero exponent says a to the zero is equal to one, right? Negative exponents, a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. Quotient rule, a to the m over a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n, right? You can subtract the exponents to get the new exponent. Power rules, the first one is if you have a power to a power, then that is a to the m times n, right? Powers to powers, you multiply. The second power rule tells you what to do when you have an exponent that can be distributed over multiplication, right? You put the m on both of them. And c, well, that does the same thing as the previous one. It distributes the exponent, but instead of over multiplication, this time we distribute over division. a to the m over b to the m. And then the negative to positive rules, if we have a to the negative m over b to the negative n, Remember, negative exponents are the keys to flipping things around. This would become b to the n over a to the m, right? They keep their exponent, but they become positive, and they switch sides. Or, if you have a over b to the negative m, you can flip to become b over a to the positive m on the outside. And all of these rules have their uses. And we want to make sure we know all of them. We will be using all of these rules. Now, there's a lot of them here, right? There's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different rules here. It might be beneficial to make flashcards to help you memorize them. You'll want to know these rules. Maybe you know, copy this page and sleep with it under your pillow to help you remember it, you know, absorb that information. You need to know these different rules. Now, on the last page, we have some combination exercises. They're going to use multiple of the rules. Now, let's write it a little bigger. This one is 2 cubed squared over 2 to the 6. Let's see. The bottom... I can't do anything to the bottom by itself, right? If I'm just looking at the top and bottom, the top has stuff to do, but the bottom, I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to figure out what's going on in the top. That's powers to powers. That'll be 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 6, right? 3 times 2 is 6. Now, notice I've got the same base here. This will be 2 to the, let's see, 6 minus 6 is 0, and 2 to the 0 is 1. 1, right? Now, maybe you saw that you could go from, you have the same thing over the same thing. That's just always going to be 1, right? Same, same answer, right? Either way, 6 minus 6 gives us 0 as the new exponent because we're dividing. Or I can just see that I have the same thing divided. I know anything over itself is always 1, right? 10 divided by 10 is 1. 100 divided by 100 is 1. 17,300,002 divided by 17,300,002 is 1, right? Always gives us 1 there. Or we can use the rules. Now in the next example, notice I have stuff in parentheses, but I should always check, are my parentheses groups all the same? And they are. It's 3y, 3y, and 3y. They are exactly the same. These are three things with the same base, you know, multiplied and divided, but I can work with it. The 3y to the 4th will stay where it is, as will the 3y squared. But this negative exponent will move that 3y to the top. Notice there's nothing left in the denominator, so I did not write a denominator. Because this here moved up top, right? Now, base, base, base are all the same. So I'll keep the base the same and add the exponents. That'll be the seventh power, right? Four plus two plus one is the seventh power. Things with the same base, you add their powers. 
now. I can finally distribute. Notice, I waited to distribute to see if I could combine. Because now, this will become 3 to the 7, y to the 7. This is not the only way to do this problem. You could have started by distributing the 4, distributing the 2, and distributing the negative 1. Or, you could have distributed the 4 here, the 2 here, and the 1 here. Either way, your final answer will always be 3 to the 7, y to the 7. That will always be the final answer. Now the last example, 5a to the negative 3 over 2 to the negative 1, b to the 4, all in parentheses to the negative 2. Now, I see a few different things I can do first. I could move the a down bottom and the 2 up top, because they have negative exponents, if I'm ignoring the outside of the problem for now. If I'm working within. Or, notice I have a negative exponent here. The first thing I am going to do is work with this negative exponent. Now, there's two ways I can work with this. I can either distribute this negative 2 inside to the 5, the a, the 2, and the b. Right? I can bring it into everything. Or, I can notice it's negative. That will flip my fraction and make itself positive. So I dealt with this negative exponent. Now, I still have negative exponents. I'm going to deal with those next. Neg 2 to the negative 1. That 2 will move down bottom times 5. And that will be it in the bottom because the a will move up top to become a cubed, and the b will have stayed right there. And then I have squared here. Notice the 2 moved south and the a moved north, right? They switched where they were. Because that's how negative exponents work with a fraction. Now, maybe I want to distribute my 2 to everything. So I'll distribute a 2, distribute a 2, distribute a 2, and distribute a 2. This will become a to the 6, powers to powers you multiply, b to the 8, powers to powers you multiply, over 2 squared times 5 squared. Now, maybe the question asks me to evaluate. It wants me to evaluate numbers with exponents. What is 2 squared? That's 4, right? Times 5 squared is 25. In the top, there is nothing else I can do to simplify these values. a to the 6, b to the 8. But in the bottom, I can multiply to get 100, right? And I'll have a to the 6, b to the 8 in the top. This is my final answer. And no matter what sequence of steps you took of the options I mentioned in the beginning, right? I said you could have distributed the negative 2 in right away. If you did that... Notice what would happen. It would become 5 to the negative 2. A, negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Over negative 1 times negative 2 is 2 to the 2. B to the negative 8. I distribute the negative 2 rather than use it to flip, right? That's another first step I could have taken. There were several ideas I could have used first in this problem. I generally prefer to get rid of negative exponents first. Just turn them positive. Get all the negative exponents out of the way first. That's my general strategy. Just so I don't have to deal with negative powers throughout the rest of the problem. Notice I got rid of this one first by flipping the whole thing. Then I got rid of the negative exponent on the 2 and the a by flip-flopping where they were. Doing this introduces a whole bunch of more negative signs and a lot more potential for error if I used the second method I did here. Right? I could have gone this way as well. But this will still give me this same answer, just along a different path. When you have these problems, sometimes you can walk different paths to get the same answer. Just make sure you're using these rules we saw on the previous page. These are the key. So, that brings us to the end 
of Section 5.2. Thanks for stopping in, and I will see you next time.